Morning, friends. Good to see everyone. It's really, really good to see everyone. Yo, this lockdown time where we couldn't fellowship and be with one another is, is not so cool, but it's so cool that we can fellowship together a bit and see one another. And, but for me, the most important is that we are under one roof serving one God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We are not here for the for the heaters and the, the luxuries. We are here for Jesus and His kingdom. And um, there's something that I want to encourage us with is Matthew 6. And Jesus is saying, Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy. On earth, things destroy, things decay. And when we put our energy in things that, that goes out and goes down and are being destroyed, we are wasting our energy. But Jesus says, um, Wherever your treasure is, there the desire of your hearts must be. Let our focus and our investments be in kingdom. Life, the goodness that of, of Him in, in your family's life, in your finances, in, in the earthly things, but also in the spiritual. We are, being, we are being blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. We are sons and daughters of Jesus in the kingdom of, of God. And uh, this is the reason why we worship. Jesus is worthy of praise. So uh, yeah, let's pray. Jesus, we love you, Lord God. Thank you for your great love, your mercy, your joy, and your peace, Lord God. Jesus, you build your church. And it's a privilege to be part of it, Lord God. It's a privilege to be one of the building blocks in your architecture, Lord Jesus, in your house, in your engineering, in your beautiful plan that you've got, Lord Jesus. Father, our hearts yearn and our hearts cry out for more to come in, Lord Jesus. We, we pray for the lost and the broken to be in a space where we are, Lord God, of being with you, Jesus Christ, in your presence. Jesus, we love to be with one another. But use us outside there, Lord God, to fulfill your mandate. Jesus, this morning we lay down everything. We worship you in spirit and truth because you are worthy. You are the lamb that was been slain. And Jesus, you are the, the roaring lion of Judah. And you rule and you reign. You are not afraid. You are the king, Lord Jesus, and you reign. We bless your name, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.
comes from you, Lord. Nothing that is good from within us, Lord, is from ourselves, Lord. It's you that's working within us, Lord. Your love for others working through us, for each other, Lord. You are so good. place of worship. You have to move into a place of obedience and 
do and offer up and give something of yourself. Lord, we've come this morning, Lord, in worship, and we lay ourselves down. We want to jump for joy, Lord. If that means I have to lay down, if that means I have to kneel, if that means I have to jump, if that means I have to shout, Lord, we will enjoy you, God. Not because of something that we do, Lord, but because of the goodness of your heart reaching out to us, Lord. And we bowing down and jumping up in worship, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. We can just be in this space of silence, just soaking up what Jesus is ministering in your heart. Jesus, we see the fire in your heart.
Christ in us, the hope of glory. Everlasting King lives in us. We want to live so close and so centered, sensitive to you, Jesus, that we, that your dust as you walk covers us. As you walk, Jesus, we follow. What you say, we say. What you do, we do. Jesus, and in our hearts is a heart of revival. We pray and yearn for revival, Jesus. As a church, we cry out for revival, Lord. We yearn for this town to sing and dance, Jesus, Lord. Jesus. Oh, Lord. Your spirit is fills people, Lord God. God, we pray for revival, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lucas, I don't. Thanks, guys. I quickly am gonna do announcements so we can take our seats. Yo, it's like it to worship Jesus. Yo, it's so good. <laughs> We're going to worship Jesus in the Word as well. And um, if you want to worship Jesus with your offering, the offering box is at the back. And um, I quickly want to run through the family news. Before I do the family news, I just want to remind us, guys, please stay adhere to the um, rules of the COVID-19 safety regulations, the 1.5 meter distance, masks, um, washing hands, sanitizing. I know you guys can... I know it by, by heart now, but please adhere to that. And then, family news. Birthdays and anniversary. Marisa Richter. Marisa, happy birthday. <laughs> um, she, uh, Marisa's got a birthday today. And then also, Hargreaves and Letitia, they are married for six years. This today. So we celebrated with them. Michaela Visa turns seven tomorrow. Jamie, say for bye, and then Angelina Masale, she's there at the back. She's, she's got a birthday, the 18th. <laughs> Cole, he's got his birthday on Friday. So <laughs> we've got the Richters, they've got their birthdays this week. So Cole sal vir Marisa vandag bederf en anders om vrijdag. And then next Sunday, the 21st, is Esme van Rooyen. She turns 10. I don't see the family, I know. So just remember, it's her birthday next Sunday. We will announce it as well. And then I want to encourage you guys to check out the Riverflow Info Group, all the information that we share there. That's the platform that we, that we uh, communicate with you guys. Please check that platform. If there's any changes, if there's anything posted, you'll find it there. One of the important things that I do want to mention is our Know to Grow um, teachings that we post Tuesday and Thursday uh, evenings at 7 o'clock. This is where the elders go into the Word, take topics, and we dig into that. And this is where we as elders want to encourage you guys is to, to connect with one another, talking about these things. And it doesn't help if we talk about finance, we go into Holy Spirit or whatever. We want to be, as a church, want to be in season with, with what we do. So please um, use that word and dig into that and, and extend it a bit with your streams and with one another. Then River Kids, for those parents, River Kids will be posted on YouTube as, as normal. Check it out and send it to your friends and family. It's good to minister to the kids in this way, but we would love to be the children to be in one, under one roof. But uh, please check that out. Good. That's all from, from my side. Parents. Jesus, thank you for your word this morning, Jesus. As we sit under your word, Lord, we open up our hearts, open up our minds. We want to worship you in this way as well. Um, transform us, Jesus. Renew our minds. We choose to, to renew our minds and we choose to be changed so that when we walk out of that door, we do not go into a old habits anymore, but we deliberately choose to change for Jesus' sake. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, guys. Thank you, Carl. This uh, distancing thing is, uh, is a bit of a stretch. I think nicer than when somebody prays for you to have them lay their hands upon you.
to have this thing done in a distance. But, but good. <coughs> good, on uh, last week, we uh, spoke about biblical ethics and uh, looked at morality and, uh, and those type of things. Then we got to a place we finished off by looking at um, Alice Bailey's 10-point plan to destroy Christianity. And uh, quite an interesting thing, it's not a conspiracy theory, it's a, it's a strategy that was developed to systematically erode the values, the Christian values and the morals um, of a Christian family. And it started off, uh, one of the first points was take out prayer and, uh, uh, and reading of, of scripture from schools. And it, it moved on and moved on and it breaks down the family and it goes into abortion and, you know, uh, promiscuity and all that type of thing. And it's really what, we, what we're seeing today. You're not allowed to hit your kids, all those type of things. And really, it's just being entrenched in our society as a people, wherever we go. And we need to be aware of these things. So we know what to pray against and, uh, and we know what, what we are facing. We need to protect and guard our kids in the process. So as we, as we are raising our children, we need to know... We need to make sure that we release at home true values and morals and not allow the schools uh, to be doing that or, th or their peers to be doing that uh, in that place. <coughs> so mankind is in a very precarious position at the moment. Um, we just have to look and see that technolo technologically we've advanced amazingly. And, uh, and we just don't seem to stop. It's just increasing at such a rapid rate. But morally, we've, we've gone off course. We've, we've lost our compass. And, uh, and society's in that place where really we, we're not in a good space. <coughs> but um, my, my message this morning is uh, on our heart. And uh, my question is, how's your heart? And we're just going to deal with that thing uh, today. Look at some biblical... Uh, events that took place just to kind of give us a, a backbone, give us a structure. But modern technology, coming back to that, is absolutely amazing. And I don't know if any of you have ever had a, um, a heart sonar. But when they, when they do a sonar of your heart, it's, it's really phenomenal to actually go in and look at the, the mitral valves of the heart. And it's almost like you've got your heart in your hands, like you've dissected it in a lab. Y you can see right inside. You can see all the little fibers and filaments and the, and the action. It's, it's phenomenal. And um, so, you know, in terms of a physical heart, that is, uh, that's, that's what we, we're able to do. We can, we've got machines for that. But when it comes to a spiritual heart, we, we don't have a machine that can gauge the condition of our spiritual heart. It's a... Um, <coughs> You know, the, the, the only thing that can really help to gauge where we are, spiritually speaking, is to see how people respond to the gospel. So when you have the gospel of Jesus Christ and it is presented to them, the condition of their spiritual heart will, will come out quite, quite clearly, evidently. And, um, and I'll, today I just want to pick up on two incidents that reveal um, that thing. So... Give me the next slide there, please. We've got, first of all, we're going we're to look at Acts 2, where Peter addresses the, uh, the crowd. There were thousands that came running at Pentecost um, when, when the Holy Spirit came on the, uh, on the early church, or the grouping. There was 120 of them gathered together, and the Holy Spirit came. There were little flames of fire on their heads and all sorts of things. They were speaking in tongues, and uh, there was, it was such a commotion that that the people that had gathered there from, from, you know, the Jews from other nations had come for Pentecost to, to celebrate the feast. And they came running to see what this commotion was about. And, uh, and then they accused these guys of being drunk, and you know the story. Um, but we'll go into that in a moment. So it's in, that's, that's the space that Peter preached at. And he preached to thousands of people. The next place we're going to look at is Acts 7, where Stephen... Um, in the early church, this, this persecution has come and uh, the church is being persecuted in a big way and people are being put in prison and they're being chased and of course the church scatters. 
and, uh, and the apostles remain behind. And Stephen, it's caught in that place where he now preaches to the Jewish religious leaders. And, uh, and in that space, we're going to look at what, what takes place with that preach. So, good. Now, in those two preachers, there are, there are two preachers at two different occasions, and the hearers, their audience, react in two different ways. And um, it, the, the account that Luke gives in the book of Acts is that they, they were cut to the heart. So after the first preach of Peter's, the, the individuals that were the hearers of, the, of that message were cut to the heart, it says. And Luke again in, in chapter 7 says the same thing. He says the hearers were cut to the heart. But the way in which they were cut to the heart was, was, was very different. And uh, just give me the, uh, the next slide, please, from Hebrews. So, just to give us kind of some guidance here. For the Word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. This is what the Word does. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. The Word exposes what's going on in our hearts. So, let's look at uh, what takes place. During, that, um, during those two preachers. You cannot lick your fingers and you cannot separate the pages. Okay, two groups of people, like we said. Two different occasions, totally. In Peter's message, we see that the result of Peter's message brings... 3,000 people into a place of accepting Jesus Christ. 3,000 people get born again. They end up being baptized. And they were added to the church number that day. One day. One message. One audience. 3,000 people get converted. Amazing. Stephen's message. Again, individuals cut to the heart in a totally different way. And their response is to take Stephen outside the walls of the city and stone him to death. Come on. The same message, the same gospel of Jesus Christ gets preached together with background history of their forefathers, etc. Same message. They stone the one preacher to death and the other preacher brings 3,000 to salvation. Isn't that incredible? The religious leaders were really the enemies of what, what God was doing. <clears throat> we can't blame the messages that were preached we're bringing the difference. They were the same. It was the same message. We can't blame the way in which the message was presented. Now it says that, um, uh, that Stephen was full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. There was nothing that he did wrong to bring about his martyrdom. Same message. And in their messages, they challenged their audiences in the same way. They were, they were firm and direct. They said, both Peter and Stephen said to their audiences, you are guilty of the Messiah's death. You are guilty of crucifying an innocent man. Same message. Peter's sermon convicts his audience. He told him, you, knew who Je you know who Jesus was. You've seen the miracles that he's been performing. You've seen the signs. You've seen the wonders. You know that God has been working through him. 
And yet you're guilty of his blood. You've crucified him. You've seen the working of God through him. You've taken the life of an innocent man. Peter made sure that they knew what he was saying, that they were guilty. Stephen's message. It was just as intense. Stephen too goes into the background, the history of the Jews, introduces it nicely, and he gets to a place where he says Jesus Christ is the Messiah that has been prophesied about. The scriptures have foretold it. The prophets have spoken about this is the Messiah. And you are responsible for the Messiah's death. In fact, he says, you know, he says, your forefathers persecuted the prophets. He says, that's not all. He said, in fact, your forefathers killed the prophets that were prophesying about the coming Messiah. And now you are guilty of the Messiah's death. You're just like your forefathers. Straight down the line. Held back nothing. Here is response to Peter was favorable. At Pentecost, they've gathered there. Jews from other nations have gathered. They're there for the feast. They receive that message. They were cut to the heart in a positive way. Hmm. Scripture says that their hearts were filled with shame. Same message. Their hearts are filled with shame. They they regretted. They wanted to repent of what had taken place. In fact, they came to Peter and to and to the apostles and they said, Oh brothers, what can we do? Like it's too late now. But but what can we do? Their hearts were ready. They believed that Jesus was the Messiah and they took the step. Peter says to them, well then you need to be baptized, repent, be baptized, and it says 3,000 were added to their number that day. How incredible is that? Stephen's response. Now we're dealing now with, with not such a, a, a major group, not such a big group of people, but we're dealing with the religious. You know what religion can do. These are the learned men. These are the men that should know. These are the men that are, that are the leaders, spiritual leaders of others. These are the ones who, who should know and identify as the Messiah. And these guys are cut to the heart, just like the previous group. But they were cut to the heart, cut to the heart in a different way. In fact, their response was violent. They wanted nothing to do with this message. You know what Scripture says? It says they were cut to the heart and they gnashed their teeth at Him. The, The New Living Translation says they shook their fists at Him in rage at that message. He told them exactly the same. This is Jesus Christ, the Messiah. You've seen what he's been doing. You've seen the miracles. You've seen God working through him. And yet they come and they, with rage, shake their fists at Peter, at uh, Stephen, and then take him, obviously, and drag him out of the city. It was not to shed his blood in the city. Do that outside, where criminals are are taken to suffer. Two basic responses to the gospel. When the gospel gets presented to people, they either willingly accept it 
and embrace it as truth. Or you get a stiff neck to rejection. But they kick against it. And in Stephen's case, violently. We're dealing with the human heart here. We're dealing with a physical heart we know, we can see, we can deal with. We've got machines to even see what's going on in our heart. Spiritually, present the gospel of Jesus Christ and see what's going on in the heart. It's the only way you're going to identify the spiritual condition of, of individuals. There's a scripture that confirms exactly this thing. Just give me that scripture, please, from 2 Corinthians 2. Through us, God spreads the knowledge of Christ everywhere like perfume. Ladies, you know what perfume is? Great. Attractive. Fragrance. Beautiful. None of it. It, it enhances your beauty. And God is spreading the knowledge of Christ everywhere like perfume. Okay. God considers us, born again believers, Christians, to be that sweet fragrance that Christ is spreading among people. People who are being saved and people who will ultimately die. In other words, who won't be saved. Those who accept and those who reject. Okay. To the one where the stench of death, where the stench is, animal gets locked, knocked down on the road and it gets left there for a week, lying around. You drive past you smell it before you even get to it. The stench. To some people, the truth of Jesus Christ is like a stench. Isn't that incredible? Stench of death. To the other, where the perfume of life, sweet fragrance. There's, there's no middle ground here. There's no fence sitting. It's either this or that. And the other say, I'll take it, thanks, or no thanks. Get it away from me. Oftentimes, when people reject the message of the gospel, they reject the messenger as well. You become, people will push you aside. You bring the message of Jesus Christ, you get isolated at work, you get pushed aside in the sports world, wherever you are, it's kind of, don't worry about him. He's just a religious bigot. To some, the response to the gospel is emotional. People, when they get to the understanding of who Jesus Christ really is, there's kind of an emotional response. To others, we've spoken about how this thing is, is physically violent. And other people just have a, a kind of a, an indifferent kind of thing. They kind of won't even talk about it. Act as if they haven't heard what you've said. And normally when people don't make any comments and uh, now in that place of just kind of indifference there's normally some or other hostility in their hearts towards God. It could be something they've got against God. They have unforgiveness perhaps towards God. Or there is a sin issue that they're carrying guilt and it causes them to feel unworthy before God and so they keep God at arm's length. I'm sure we all understand what it's like to be condemned when you have sin issues in our lives. We know what, we know what the feeling of condemnation is. But there's still hope, because we know from, you know, when you think of Stephen, when Stephen was martyred, the individual standing there that looked after the, the, the robes of those that were stoning Stephen was Saul. who went on to have his name changed to Paul, who wrote a great deal of the New Testament. So there is hope for change.
Give me the next slide, please. Romans 8 verse 7. It's for the sinful nature is always hostile to God or towards God. It never did obey God's laws and it never will. The sinful nature, that's kind of, we're born with a sinful nature. Every single person is born with a sinful nature. There's a natural rejection of the things of God. There's a hostility in our hearts. We're born with that towards spiritual things. Colossians 1, verse 21. Because at one time you were separated from God. You were enemies in your minds. This is where the battleground is. Because of your evil ways. You see, the moment we engage in any form of sin, we know morally, if we've been brought up in a home where morals are, are presented, we kind of, it's almost like in our conscience we're aware of right from wrong. From the beginning. We know from, from toddlers, they want to touch something and say, no. And then they look you in the eyes and they will do that thing again. It's kind of, there's an awareness from this age of sin, from, of, of right from wrong. And when we do something wrong as adults or as grown-ups or when we are accountable, above the age of accountability, when we, we're responsible for our own actions, we know and we become enemies of God in our minds because we know. And until we have an understanding that God will actually accept us in our depravity, we think that God... Is, has absolutely kicked us aside because of our sin. And the people that God is reaching out to, and we say the hardest, or with the most effort, are those that are deeply entrenched in sin. People can't understand that. God is wanting to pull people out of their positions into a place of absolute Forgiveness and freedom. And there's a lack of understanding around those things. And people think we first have to give up smoking, first have to give up drinking, womanizing, all those things that you have before God will accept you. God says, I'll take you as you are. Thank you. <clears throat> now, our hearts need to be kept healthy. Physical hearts. We know that. We know that if we don't exercise, perhaps even abuse our bodies through overeating, or, you know, some of us are, are sweet tolics. We just kind of run do away with sweets. And it's, it's not good. It's not healthy. So, yeah, there's been, a, there's been a move towards healthy living and, and that type of thing. But we know that the body needs exercise. And if we want to live a, a reasonable life, in fact, we can extend the years of our life through exercise. Keep our heart healthy. This is the pump. Keep our physical heart healthy. We're going to live, hopefully, a decent life. It's kind of in our hands. That's good. Spiritual heart. In, in terms of our spiritual heart, our, our spiritual hearts also need exercise. We also need to stay focused. There's a need for us to spend time in God's Word and, and for us to be spending time in prayer. To have our relationship with Jesus Christ finely tuned. That's spiritual exercise. Hmm. Proverbs 4. Hmm. Verse 23 says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. 
Guarding our hearts, taking care of our hearts, is in our hands, both naturally and spiritually. How's your heart? How's your heart? Hmm. Kind of a question that we can ask, but we mustn't make light of that really, because kind of it's, a, it's an important issue. See, those, those that are born again, the expectation, Jesus said himself, you need to be born again. There needs to be a spiritual renewal. There needs to be something that takes place in your life where you know you are in right standing with God. Called being born again. As born again believers, when we come into, when we become sons and daughters of the Most High God, He then starts a work in us and He brings it and He says He'll see it through to completion. And that process is sometimes a comfortable, an uncomfortable um, process. Sometimes it's kind of easy. But God brings about adjustment in our lives. And we all have our weaknesses. All have our, we all have bad character in places. And God is kind of working on those things because He wants us to be more like His Son. So in terms of the Christ likeness, becoming more like Christ is kind of what we live for as born-again believers. Kind of all the rough edges are being taken off and smoothed over and we start to look eventually like, wow, we're getting our attitudes and you know, the way we live our lives, the way we, we deal with our, with our assets and all those things, it's more like Christ compared to when we first got saved. Once I was tight-fisted and now I'm, I'm liberal with my finance. You know, once I was a, a drinker and a blasphemer and, and, and today, you know, I don't put alcohol to my lips just so I can be an example to others. Examples. And our spiritual hearts are being tested and adjusted. You know what? There are times where even as born-again believers, there are areas in our lives where we refuse to make a change. And even as born-again believers, we will, we will kick against areas that God wants to bring transformation in. So in some areas, we, we are happy to change. Yeah, I see that character problem of mine. Thank you. And I make adjustments and I, you know, I stumble and fall from time to time, but I, I come back to the place of, got to work on this, got to work on this. I'm, I'm going to overcome this thing. Other things, we say, violent reaction. I'll, have, I'll hear nothing of it. What's going on in our hearts? I want nothing to do with that. And when people mention it or something in our life, we reject the people, the messenger. God will use people to come across our lives, come across our paths and, uh, and reveal these things that are going on in our lives, in our hearts. And God is wanting us to be more like Christ, like, more Christ-like in every area. And for some areas we're happy, cool. In other areas we say, get behind me, Satan. Are we as born-again believers in certain areas of our lives shaking our fists in rage? regarding the tests that God is bringing our way. I'm going to end off. Just as an encouragement, if this was a court case this morning, I think we've heard all the evidence, and now we have to come to a verdict. If there's room for improvement in your spiritual walk, if your spiritual heart is not in a, the best condition, maybe this morning is the time we need to kind of pick up the challenge. Say, I hear that thing. I'm a procrastinator. I'm unreliable, perhaps. You know, the, the areas that we need to look at. 
from today on, I want, to, I, want, I want to start working on that area of my weakness. I have no discipline, whatever. In terms of your spiritual health, make a point. If things have been highlight, highlighted to you this morning, make a point from today just to work on it. I want to say to you as an encouragement is that God is for you. And when God is busy working on areas of weakness in our lives, it's not with the intention where there's a stick behind his back, just in case we fail. It's with his loving Holy Spirit to bring transformation because he wants us, after all, to be like his son. We need to bring our hearts in line with God's heart for us. As born-again believers, we sit with an advantage. We have Holy Spirit indwelling us as a motivator, as an encourager. Holy Spirit is there. It should be a lot easier for us than, than people in the world. We have a Savior who sits at the right hand of the Father interceding on our behalf. He's walked a road. Our Savior walked a road. He knows what it is like to be human. Scripture says that He faced every test that we face. And yet He never failed. That's why we're aiming to be more like Him. And He intercedes on our behalf to the Father. He knows our weaknesses individually. And He intercedes on our behalf. How brilliant is that? We, we're privileged. Hmm. I want to encourage you this morning. Take that step. We'll end with that. You'll never be sorry you did. Father, we pray as we have sat under the word this morning and have heard what, what you have said, that we would have the courage, Lord, to, to make the adjustments. that we've been convicted of. Father, give us the, the strength to carry it through, the focus, the discipline to carry it through. Father, our desires to become more Christ-like, be transformed into your likeness. Pray that Christ-likeness would not just be a term that we use, Lord, but really would be, would be the the, the reality that we advance into. Thank you, Lord, that you have started a work in us and you will see it through to completion. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, guys. Guys, just two more things. Uh, Joseph, can you please share that testimony that you guys had this week? Please. Oh. So, um, Monday, last week. Something happened. Hannes, uh, he's working on the farm. Lord touched him, so he uh, speak to some, some of the men from the community there. And uh, um, so he came to me and he said, No, that he would just want us to make a follow up because some of them gave their hearts to Jesus, six in particular. And uh, the other night, him and me, we went there, and we went into the office, and these guys was there, and uh, all six of them. Um, these are men from a very poor um, community, struggling, uh, striving through life. So they deal 
with the things that many of us we are more um, blessed so we don't always see these things but as they sat there and as me and Janus as we were talking to them and relating with them the Lord opened up something and some of these guys are involved in smoking dacha others are uh, dealing with hookers others are um, drinking wine but the Lord just brought those things up and we had the chance to pray to them and to set them free and we also had the chance to not we, the Holy Spirit came into the room and he sank like a cloud he came into the room and he just hanged there and he went down on them and during the time that we were there even myself I was taken back far and I was reminded of where God took me out and how he raised me up and put me back on my feet um, it was such an amazing experience to see Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit moving in the way that he did amongst those men and their eyes and as their lives were portrayed in front of us because only the Holy Spirit Jesus Christ can do that we were in an office but their lives came to the front things that is happening in their homes in private came out and was brought to light and we were able to speak to them and to confront those matters and to pray and not just confront it but cut it and that's what Jesus Christ is doing at the moment that is what the Lord is doing he is moving as I I had this um, I just want to share this with you as I finish off this, this, this testimony um, I saw feet walking in a desert kind of landscape on the rocks with sandals but these feet were hard and tired and everywhere when the one foot goes down there is a rock but behind the rock there is a little green piece of grass coming out of the grand, ground and breaking through the ground um, don't take for granted what this time gave to us and what the Lord brought in front of us during this lockdown period because something is growing and the Lord is moving and as from the beginning of the year as we grabbed onto him and as he started moving we are still moving with him don't let go now because this is just the beginning and I believe that as Jesus stepped into those men's lives he stepped into our lives again today as he does each day as he rises up with us each morning and as we are moving forward there is a, a revival being born we must keep on praying now for revival in the locations amongst the people that needs it the most because there are people who's got everything but they don't see but those who don't have they grab onto Jesus and it's like a sponge that was pressed in and when you put it into the water it sucks all the water up that it can speak the word let it go out as you walk during the day let it drift out from your mouth pray about it ask the Holy Spirit to just awaken your heart and let it flow because as the river flows so does the Holy Spirit and this is where we are now we have to let the river flow we can't put uh, something in front so that the water just bangs up and bangs. It's been too long. Now is the time to let the river flow. Let it break out and let it flow. Thank you, Yusuf. Um, Charlie, ach, Elifa, you've got a testimony. Morning. 
Um, so many of you know my life has been a bit of a hospital education. <laughs> um, but through all of it, there has been healing. Recently, however, I've had a miracle <laughs> in my life. Um, for the past couple of months, good couple of months, um, I've been suffering with a lot of pain bottom here. And um, I've been going to the clinic and just they couldn't find out what it was. So I've been blessed to have a friend in the church who has helped me at the hospital. We eventually found out that it was endometriosis. Um, endometriosis is a growth of tissue and what it had done is that it had gone outside of the womb and it had started to form a mass. The mass at that time was four by five centimeters. So it was around about the size of this thing. I'm little. <laughs> so for all your organs as well as this mass to be there to give you a description of pain that I was in, you can ask my husband. I'd lie in bed and I'd grab onto the, um, the sheets and I wouldn't be able to breathe. I'd be stuck in that ball of position. Sometimes when it would actually have to pick me up off the bed just so that I could breathe. Um, I started taking medication daily, but this is now oh, what neurofin and mybelin and straight throughout the day. And um, anyway, so things started getting worse and I got an emergency appointment, you could say, um, with the gynecologist so that they could do a sonar to see what was going on. Um, the sonar showed that this mass was gone. After all the prayer, through my stream, through my family, through the church, through my son, my baby boy, oh, the faith of a child. Jesus, I know that you can do this because you're the biggest and the bestest. <laughs> I know you can take this away. And just the faith of these prayers was so amazing. And just to follow what Yusuf was saying, um, I was speaking to him about how thankful we should be for what we have. And that miracle, I have got absolutely no pain after that operation. I, the, I've got no pain here at all. And um, yeah, my little boy, he prayed and he just said, Jesus, I know that you can do it. You can do everything. You can move mountains. You can, he was saying about how you can pick up volcanoes. <laughs> and he said, please, can you just the people in the streets if you can please just build them houses and put stuff inside <laughs> so that they can eat and sleep. We bless you Jesus. Thank you Lord. Guys, thank you so much. We're going to worship one more song if you guys would like to join us. Um, if you want to go home, you're welcome, but we're still going to do one more song and praise Jesus. Guys, we pray, Jesus, blood and angels of protection over you, where you go, what you do this week. May you have a productive week, and may you be focused on Jesus. Bless you. Cheers.
tested many of them already. <laughs> it just makes room for so much faith. Ah. I was completely captivated by that. Thank you. And Terence, the last words of yeah, Jesus being the intercessor because he has empathy. That's why he can intercede, because he's got empathy. Um, sure. Just broke my heart. God, you're so good, Lord. And you are worthy of it all. Hmm.
sky No oh, love the glory Oh love the glory It's yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours Oh love the glory Oh love the glory It's yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours Oh love the glory Oh love the glory It's yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours Oh love the glory Oh love the glory It's yours, it's yours Full of the glory, 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 full of the glory,